So we will continue with our study. We're finishing up the study on the works of the flesh, um, getting ready to start studying the fruit of the Spirit, which I've been telling you for three years. <laughs> I said, one of these days, we're going to get around to studying the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, we really are going to get around to that shortly, as soon as God will allow me to do that. But, uh, now, you know, last week we talked a lot about our position and our practice and the importance of understanding that if you don't ever learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. And uh, we looked at 2 Corinthians 6.14 and how you've got to understand that. And you'll never understand that passage if you don't understand position and practice. Where he says, you shall be sons and daughters unto me. Um, Positionally, we're always sons and daughters if we're born again. But practically, not so. Practically, it's only so if we are walking. I'll cut it to the chain. If you're walking in the Spirit, if you're walking in His presence, then ye are sons and daughters. And that's so vital because otherwise, that for years I tripped over that thing, many, many years. And I thought, well, I'm just going to go on. I don't understand how you did not be the. And it made me think about losing my salvation and all that kind of stuff. And there's many passages that if you don't understand position and practice, you will swear that passage is teaching the loss of your salvation. And I told my wife, I said, I said, you know what? I said, I could take scripture and I could get up and I can prove to a man that he loses his salvation. My verses that are, and I can convince most of them if they're not grounded in the word of God. And a lot of people do that. But it's not there. You're not going to find it in the Word of God. That doctrine is not taught in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we are completely dependent upon you. Father, if we think that we're something, we're nothing. <laughs> Unless we're walking in thy spirit, and to you we are everything. Your thoughts toward us are in number as the sand. We are the apple of your eye. Please, may that be where we find our identity. Not in the eyes of man, but in the eyes of God. Teach us. Help reach us. Help us to have a humble, teachable, reachable spirit this morning. Hungry for God and the word of God. Learning your purpose and will and how to serve you. We love you. We need you in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Look with me at Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to pick up this morning, really pick up on the last work of the flesh, and we're going to move forward into this passage. And that is, look at verse 21, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings. And that's the last one we're going to look at. And such like, God says, of which I tell you before, as I, now listen carefully to this, which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now see, there's another verse right there, that if you don't understand position and practice, you can say, well, the Bible says right there, if you do those things, you are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. And if you don't understand position and practice, you will never, ever come to an understanding of what that is teaching right there. It has nothing to do with us losing our salvation, which we will see hopefully shortly. All right, just a momentary look at the word revelings and what God is talking about. You will readily... Good morning. Come on Good morning. in. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, thank you, Jerry. Wonderful to have y'all. Thanks for being here. Good. Special guest. We're in Galatians chapter 5, studying the works of the flesh. So the last works of the flesh found there in verse number 21 is revelings. And this is a word certainly pertinent to our day. It means this. A rough, noisy feast or drinking party. That's the life of the world today is drinking parties. Amen? It's a, revelings, a rough, noisy feast or drinking party. Now listen, where morality is thrown to the wind. Anything goes. It's a wild, it, it is 
Revelings is wild, loose conduct and behavior. Characterized, and this is what it's characterized by, is characterized by unrestrained debauchery. Another word you might put into place of debauchery is depravity, which is the essence of our flesh. It's the essence of the old man. So it's, a, it's wild, loose conduct characterized by un, un, unrestrained debauchery and merrymaking. They think they're having fun. Amen. Well, you know what? I did for so, so long. I mean, that if there was a party going, I mean, you know, that, I mean, that was just, you know, didn't think about not going to one if you were invited and you were having a great time. You, were, you told yourself you were having a great time. And so that is one of the, the uh, works of the flesh, of, of the last one that we're going to study. And folks, that is just the raw essence of the old man. We have, if we're going to be and we're going to be victorious in this Christian walk. We've got, yes, we've got to learn to walk in the Spirit. So we become, can become super sensitive to the Spirit. And any at any moment, if we have a, even a thought of one of these works of the flesh, the Holy Spirit can just gently put us, He can give us that touch, and He can say, wait a minute, wait a minute, why are you thinking that? Mm -hmm. You need to bring that thought into captivity under the obedience of Christ. And he'll teach us where that thought leads if we don't do that. Amen. And sometimes, unfortunately, sometimes we learn it by experience. But it's better to learn it from his word. Amen. Amen. And let the Holy Spirit <clears throat> prompt us and prick us before we even get into the imagination aspect. Get it while it's a thought. And bring it into captivity Amen. under the obedience of Christ. All right. So that's the last one we're going to look at. And we're going to move forward in this verse. Good morning, Dave. Galatians 5, 21. Let's look at the last part of that verse we read right here. He, he says, Drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you, of which, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past. Now listen to these words. That they which do such things, what things? The works of the flesh he just named. Listen, now listen. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now on the surface, obviously, that it, it, it might, might put a little fright in you. Think, well, God says if I do that, I'm not going to go to heaven. That's not what, that's not what he, said. he said. He said you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. There's a world of difference in the kingdom of God and heaven, okay? <laughs> the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom that you exist in right now. Amen. I hope you are anyway. If you're walking in the spirit and you're in submission to the king of the kingdom, you are walking in that kingdom right now. You are living a heavenly citizenship right now. Hopefully from the time you woke up this morning, you've been living that heavenly citizenship. What's, what is the golden rule I've told you about walking in the spirit? The, you don't get out of your bed. You don't even speak to your mate. Until you know you're in the Spirit. Until you know you're in fellowship with the Father and with the Son. Don't even speak to your mate. Because there's a good chance you're in the flesh and you had a bad night. And, and what comes out of your mouth can be ugly and nasty in the mornings. And you can, you can hurt your mate's feelings without even thinking about it or realizing it. Because you're just expressing what's in that old man. And so you set the tone for the whole day. You ruin her day with your mouth, you know, or she ruins your day with her mouth. And then you see how that works? And what do we want in our home? We want the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, Ephesians 4 and 3. That's what we want in our homes if you want a happy home. Amen. Okay, so, so what does that mean? Wow. Yeah. I have told you is that, that, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, Galatians 5.21. All right, now, let's look at this. Let's break it down. Look with me, first of all, at Colossians. Let's see where this kingdom of God concept begins in our life. Colossians chapter 1. Let's see exactly what we're talking about here. 
Colossians chapter 1, and look with me at verse number 13. Ah, let's look at verse number 12. All right, Colossians 1, number 12, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. How did he do that? Well, he'll be wanting to tell us he did that by redeeming us with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He made us meet or fit for the kingdom of God and for the inheritance that goes with it. Verse 13, who had delivered us from the power of darkness. And of course, that word power, power has to do with the authority of darkness. It has to do with the authority of your father before you got saved, which was not your heavenly father, but it was Satan himself. And he says, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Now listen, here it is. This is what he did when he delivered us from the power of darkness. And hath translated us into where? Hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. <sighs> and folks, that is your position in Jesus Christ the moment you are born again. The moment you experience the circumcision of the Lord Jesus Christ, Colossians chapter 2, where the body of the sins of the flesh is put away from the soul and the spirit. And according to the Colossians chapter 2, the soul of the spirit is completely immersed by the Holy Spirit, which is called Holy Spirit baptism, by the way, in the scripture. Not only is it completely immersed, it tells us in Ephesians 1 and other places that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And we become what God calls a new creature in Christ. Isn't that great? You got to understand these things to understand this. And so he says here that we are translated. That word translated basically means transfer. You got to transfer. And it's a big time transfer, amen? You moved up, in, not in the world. No, he didn't move up in the world. You moved up in, in, in God's kingdom. Praise God. All right, now with that in mind, this is where it begins. And this is talking about our what? Our position. How do you get your position? By grace through faith. The same way you get your salvation. It happens at the moment you get saved by grace through faith. Not of works. There's not one thing you can do to establish your position. And you know what's wonderful about that? There's not one thing you can do to lose your position. I love it. You're so secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. So you've got to understand your position if you're going to, if you're going to understand this passage over in Galatians 5 and so many other passages. Now look with me at Romans 14. Back up to Romans 14, please. Lord, please, we're trusting you to help us. I can teach, but you have to give the spiritual understanding. May we have a reachable teaching of spirit. Romans 14, and look with me at verse number 17. Now, what we're going to look at now. Well, I'll, I'll let you look at that. So maybe you can determine that before I even say it. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Okay? It has nothing to do with, with carnality. It has nothing to do with the body as we know it and, and our partaking of food or drink. No, it, it has nothing to do with that. But here's what the kingdom of God has to do with. He says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but this is what it is. It's righteousness and peace and joy. Where? In the Holy Ghost. If you are in the Holy Ghost this morning, you're in the kingdom of God. God's spiritual kingdom this morning. Amen? Isn't that a glorious thing? If you're not, there's only one other option if you're not in the Holy Ghost this morning. Good morning, sister. There's only one other option if you're not in the Holy Ghost. Where are you? You're in the flesh. What kind of mind do you have? A carnal mind. And so that's, that's, now, hmm, that if I'm not in the kingdom of God, and I'm in the flesh, where am I? Well, you have chosen to be transferred back to the power of darkness. Folks, there's only two places you can be. 
You have chosen to put back on the old lost nature, the old man. And folks, if you do that, you're going to go back to being under the power and authority of Satan that walks about seeking whom he may devour at his will. God, you say, well, God won't let that happen. No, he won't let that happen. You're letting it happen. Amen? And that's the danger of choosing to walk in the flesh over walking in the spirit. And so, so he says here, um, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, what I'm getting at is this. Colossians 1.13 was talking about the kingdom of God. Obviously, that's our, he was talking about our position in Jesus Christ at the moment of salvation. But he's not talking about salvation right here. He's talking about your practice. Amen. He's talking about your daily righteousness. The, your, your daily moment by moment. Whether you have peace or not. Do you have joy in your soul? And the answer to that is the only possible way you can have it. The only way you can live your heavenly citizenship. The only way you can have righteousness and peace and joy. Is what? If you're in the Holy Ghost. And that's something you do practically. That, that is not something that, that this verse is not talking about your position. This is your choices right here. This is choices you make moment by moment during the course of the day. This is practicing your faith or practical Christian living. So it's vitally important to understand that. Now, go back to Galatians 5 with that in mind. With that in mind. I like to call it overlaying biblical principles. When I was growing up, we had an encyclopedia, a college year's encyclopedia. And the portions that I just, I don't know if I is, I love, is, is you would go to like, uh, oh, the body. And it would have like the endocrine, yeah, that, you know, that big word system, uh, the nerve system, the blood system. Da -da 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 -da. And it, it, all the pages were clear. And you start off with like just a form of a body and you turn the page and it show all the blood vessels and and, uh, and then you turn the next page and show, it showed the, the traversing of the nerves and, and organs and, and, and it's like, that just made sense to me and I've never forgotten and, and I, I gained a great, great understanding of my body physically from that. Well, that's, uh, God wants you to learn how to compare Scripture with Scripture. In, in 1 Corinthians 2, he calls it comparing that which is spiritual with spiritual. And I often wondered for years, well, what is spiritual with spiritual? Then one day I was reading the Word of God, and it said, Thy law is spiritual. Uh, hey! So I need to compare the Word of God with the Word of God. Yeah, that's one of God's methods of studying the Word of God is comparing Scripture. And I like to think of it as an overlay principle. And, and I, I see Galatians chapter 5, then I'll go back to Colossians 3, and I'll put that clear page on the top of it and pull the principles from it that tie into it. And then I'll go to Romans 14, and I'll flip that over there and see how that fits into it. And all of a sudden, a picture is coming into my mind of what God's talking about when he talks about the kingdom of God. Isn't it? Amen. Amen. And that's just the way God gives spiritual understanding. It's the way the Spirit teaches you through the Word of God. Amen? Amen. You can't separate the Spirit and the Word of God. You can't separate the working of the Spirit and the Word of God. I, I mean, I hear a lot of people talking about what the Spirit says to them, and, 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 it's, and it's like this, they're kind of getting off in the weeds a little bit. And we, yeah, well, brother, you don't know what the Spirit said to them, what he didn't say to them. No, I don't actually, but I do actually. Amen. Because he does not say to them anything contrary to that book right there. Amen? Amen. Amen? And when they start talking like that, my spirit suddenly no longer bears witness with them because they've departed from the truth of that book right there. And, and I don't make fun of them, honestly. I, I just, I love them, try to help them. I, I, but I'm just saying, amen, we need to understand these things. All right, now, to further understand this, he said, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I want to give you a definition of the word inherit. Now, going back to the fact that you were translated from the power of darkness unto the kingdom of his dear son, 
You became a child of God, did you not? And we read in Romans chapter 8 that if ye are children, he says, I think it's 16, then are ye heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. You know who gets the inheritance? The heirs get the inheritance. So keep that in mind. So inherit means this. To come into possession of, due to being an heir. That makes sense, doesn't it? To inherit, to come into possession of, just strictly based on the fact that you are an heir. Okay, so, okay, yeah. They <coughs> which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So, how did I get into this kingdom of God? By becoming a child of God, I became a joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. And what I'm finding is exciting, and along with coming into the kingdom of God, I gained an inheritance, a spiritual inheritance. And that is mine. And it's a living inheritance. I can take part of it every moment of every day of my Christian life. And the more I grow in the Lord, the more I'm seeing the depth of this incredible treasure chest, this inheritance that is ours. What a wonderful life he gives us, an abundant life he gives us. And so to come into possession of due to being an heir. Now listen carefully. All sons and daughters of a king, what are they? They're heirs. That makes sense? Are you not a son or a daughter of the king, Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, you are. In fact, that, that makes you what? Royalty. Christians, I tell you, as I've told you many times, we have got to start looking at ourselves the way God looks at us. Yes, we can be sinful scumbags. Yes, yes, we can. But only when we choose to walk in the flesh. If you have put off the old man and put on the new man, you should have a brand new attitude with that. A brand new spirit with that. You shouldn't be going around talking about what a dirty, rotten, slime pit you are and, 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 and <coughs> knocking yourself and beating yourself down. That is not pleasing to God. If you're the new creature in Christ, you are not any of those things. Amen? You're royalty. You're the son of a king. By the way, Peter, what kind of priest does he call you? Oh, yeah, he did. He said, you are a royal priest. Folks, God said that. Your father said that about you. That is the way he sees you. Amen? We need to start looking at ourselves the way God values us. Not the way other men value us and knock us down and kick us down in this old world. You know, some people live there. I know the sweetest fellow. I, and, and, and good teachers in the church. And good, I love him. Great Christian guy. But that's where he lives. Every time you talk to him, He's, he's somebody who's beating down or beating out of something, and everybody's a foe. And, and it's like, oh, my heart just goes out. I'm thinking, oh, you're walking more in the flesh than you are in the spirit. You, you don't know what kind of inheritance you're not even tapping into that's yours. But he apparently hasn't been taught. And folks, so many Christians haven't been taught how to look at themselves the way the Father looks at them. Amen. It all out of quality of life. Well, how it changes your attitude and your spirit. Okay, so uh, all sons and daughters of a king are heirs. <coughs> now, I'll say this just briefly in reference to what we studied last week from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Positionally, you're always a son and a daughter. Practically, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, there were conditions, remember, that he laid down. If you'll come out from among them, and separate yourself and touch not the unclean thing. What did he say? You shall be my sons and daughters. But I thought I already was. Yeah, you are positional. But practically on a day-by-day -day basis, only if you're walking in the kingdom, in the spirit, hello, 
And you are separating yourself, not loving this world, but separating yourself from this world. Then he said, you shall practically, listen to what God's saying. In practice, you shall be my sons and my daughters. Why is that important? Because when you're sons and daughters, you are heirs to everything Jesus is an heir to. You're, you know what joint heir means with Christ? That's what it says. It means you are, you've got all the entitlement, all the rights to anything Jesus Christ. Whoa, that makes a hair stand up on my arm. Folks, it's ours. We've got to learn how to tap into it, amen, and start living it and applying it in our lives. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit. He's, when he says, they, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That he's talking about a moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day basis. If you, if you want to do the works of the flesh, go ahead. It's your choice. God made us. He, he made us with a free choice, didn't he? But don't think you're going to inherit God's kingdom and the inheritance he has for you on a moment by moment, hour by hour, day. Don't expect to get all the wonderful riches of joy and peace and righteousness. No, you won't have it. And I won't have it if I choose to walk in the flesh. So this is not talking about losing your salvation. It's talking about your daily walk with the Lord as we walk in the Spirit. Okay, now, we're getting very close to studying the fruit of the Spirit. Let's move into verse 22. Now, we're going to move into it, but then, I'm sorry to say, we're going to take a detour and move right back out. But we're going to get to the fruit of the Spirit very, very soon. But I just thought we were going to do it, but the Lord kind of redirected me. Okay, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I, love, I just love reading these things. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. There they are listed right there. All right, now, but before we go into each one of those individually, and I can't wait to start studying these individually, I want to look at the word fruit. I want us to get a good understanding of what we're talking about here. The fruit of the Spirit. The first thing I want you to understand is, I think there's nine there. I've counted them over and over again. That's what I come up with. But I want you to understand, he didn't say fruits. If he wanted to say fruits, he'd have said fruits. There's other passages of Scripture that talks about the fruits of righteousness. So he could have said fruits. He said fruit. It is a ninefold, like a like a cluster of grapes. It is a it is a ninefold cluster of fruit. Now that's important because the minute you put off the flesh and put on put off the old man, put on the new man, and you're walking in the light as he is in the light. You're walking in the spirit once you confess your sins. Amen. Amen. That's a, isn't that beautiful? How simple is that? When you truly confess your sins, you're automatically walking in the Spirit. You're automatically in the throne room with the Father and the Son with the same righteousness and the same true holiness in God's eyes. And folks, that's where you got to start living your life from, looking at it from God's point of view. And start enjoying that throne room. Enjoy that fellowship. Don't walk around with it, something over you. Well, I think I'm in fellowship with the Lord, but I but but shut up your butts and just enjoy the journey. Amen. Enjoy the fellowship. You've got their righteousness, their true holiness. You've got nothing to be ashamed of, brother. The Bible says we should be blameless. Several places where when Jesus comes back, that used to worry me slap to death because I knew there was something to blame me about all day long, all the time. And finally, one God, God said, well, when I come back, if you're in the throne room with us, walking with us, and our righteousness and true holiness, what would I have to blame you for? And it sunk in. I don't know if I jumped, or I know my heart jumped. It was like, yeah! Hallelujah! Oh, what a good life God's given us. 
All right, fruit. It's a singular yet ninefold <laughs> cluster of fruit. The word, the word fruit, the word speaks of, now listen, I thought I found this in the, in the, in the you know, we always look back into the Greek a little bit, don't we? Well, of course we do. But in the Greek, the, uh, <coughs> the word speaks of fruit. Not it, it speaks of fruit as, as it is plucked off the tree. Not when it's three months old and it's starting to dry out. It speaks of fresh fruit. That's the best fruit, isn't it? Why is that the best fruit? Because that's when it's when that's where when the maximum amount of life is in the fruit. The maximum amount of nutrients, the maximum amount of sweetness is in the fruit. The maximum amount of nutrition is in the fruit. When it's generally speaking, when it's put picked plucked off of the tree. Okay? And you know me, I love definitions. So I want to give you just a simple definition, a few comments about the word fruit, give you an understanding when he's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit, it is that which is produced. And you hear me all the time say, if you will walk in the Spirit, He will produce the ninefold fruit of the Spirit in your life. All nine will start being produced at the same exact moment. There will be joy, brother. There will be a real love for your wife. Not the love we struggle to do when we're walking in the flesh. And aren't some too successful sometimes. End up being nasty to our wives and saying things we should never have said. It's a real love. It's a gentle love. Amen. It's, it's a true love of Jesus Christ. And, and so these things are so important. It is that which is produced based upon... Now listen. It is that which is produced based upon the quality of the life... Ooh, this is good. That which is produced based on the quality of the life-giving forces within it. Amen. Amen. It is that which is produced based upon the quality of the life-giving forces within it, such as water. Now compare this to your spiritual life. The living water of God. The word of the living God. So it is that which is produced based upon the quality <coughs> of the life-giving forces within it, such as water and nutrients. Now listen. Designed and supplied specifically and uniquely for that fruit. Not every fruit will, will, will grow in the same climate. Not every fruit will grow in the same soil. In fact, nothing I plant at my house will grow. I don't know. There's got to be something going on here. But we always say we have a black thumb. Mm -hmm. But the way God designed it, it's a beautiful thing. Just like our life is a beautiful thing. And if, and if we will allow him to, if we will allow him to water our soul and to give us the nutrition we should be getting, amen, from this book, we, we will be a sweet piece of fruit. Yeah. We will be rich, brother, in our spiritual understanding. We will be rich in Christ-like character. Oh, we will be one fine piece of fruit. In fact, you might say that fruit, God would not mind having it himself and feasting on it. And he feasts on your life, folks. One of my greatest goals in my life, well, Father, you hear me, you and Jesus are watching us this morning. You hear me all the time. One of my greatest goals in life, when I wake up in the morning, I talk, I'll even tell him sometime, Lord, show me today how I can bring you the greatest possible pleasure. Yeah. Lord, it is not about me. I don't, it's, I've had too much pleasure already. Show me how to bring you the greatest possible pleasure. I want my life to be sweet. I want it to be full of life and vibrant. Amen. I want my father just to feast on my my life. Amen. That he's provided for me. So, so fruit. That gives you an idea of what we're talking about right here. Uh, also, I, I saw another definition. Fruit, it, it is that which is produced. 
But fruit can also mean, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Fruit can also mean the effect of or the result of. The, the, the effect. We got time. Real quickly, look with me at Isaiah. Zoom over there. Isaiah 32. And this is probably what we'll come back to next week. Isaiah 32, and look with me at verse number 15. Favorite verse. Oh, I love it. Dave and I discuss it often. Isaiah 32, verse 15. Now listen carefully to what God's saying. Until the Spirit be what? <coughs> Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness be a fruitful field. Think of the wilderness of your life becoming a fruitful field once the Spirit is poured upon you. And the fruitful field be counted a, a forest. <laughs> it becomes a fruitful field. But as, as you start taking part of your inheritance and walking in the Spirit consistently, that fruitful field, it'll grow into an absolute lush forest. Don't you love that picture? I want my life to be that lush forest. Forest. Oh, so full of fruit. <laughs> and he says this. Now listen, I love this. Then, oh, I like this. Then, when, when the sports out, when the spirits out poured, you're growing, producing fruit, then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness. You know what judgment's talking about? Judgment is talking about your ability as a believer through the unction of the Holy Spirit and the help of the Holy Spirit to discern both good and evil, what's right and wrong, and making right decision. We call it right judgment calls, don't we? Making, that's what they are. They're judgment calls. He says, then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness. Now listen. And righteousness remained in the fruitful Field. What I want you to see right here is this principle of, of fruitfulness, of, of, of the fruit of the Spirit. Judgment is produced by the, the Spirit being poured out on you. And you growing, right, into a fruitful field and growing even more into a lush jungle. Into a life, you're growing, you're maturing. And as you do that, your judgment becomes sharp. It becomes, you're perfecting your judgment, you're growing in your judgment and your decision making and your judgment calls, just like you are every other area. And what I love, and you can study it, Old Testament or New Testament, what always follows good judgment. If you make good judgment calls, what always follows, Old Testament and New, I studied it, you'll always find righteousness comes next. So you could say good judgment is the fruit of being full of the Holy Spirit and having the Spirit poured out on you and growing in the Word. Okay? And then you could say that the fruit... Bill always right over my brain. <laughs> you can always, you can also say that righteousness is the fruit of judgment. Helps is the fruit of judgment. Thank you, brother. That bell just blew me away. <laughs> I, yeah, I should get used to it, but I hate it so much. But um, say that again. The righteousness is the fruit of judgment. Yes, thank you. And righteousness is the fruit of good. You see how that works. And that's what we're talking about in Galatians 5, where the, the fruit is produced in you from, is, is from walking in the Spirit. There can be no ninefold fruit of the Spirit if you're not, if the Spirit's not poured out upon you. Amen. It's just the way it works. But let's, let's close with this. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. That's where I want to be. Now listen to this. This is beautiful. And the work of righteousness shall be what? Ah. See, doesn't this help you to see where the peace of God that passes all understanding comes from? The fruit of righteousness is what? Peace. <laughs> so if you don't have any peace in your life, you might 
start looking and searching your heart because there might be some unrighteousness that needs to be confessed. Amen? All right, so let's finish this. And the word of righteousness shall be peace. Now listen to these beautiful words. And the effect of righteousness. Listen to this. Quietness. Quietness in your soul. Tranquility. Peace in your soul. Even when your world's falling apart, you can have quietness in your soul. The effect of righteousness, quietness, and what? Oh, I love it. Sure. And assurance forever. Folks, if you are, if the Spirit's been born out of you, if you're walking in the Spirit, you will have no problem with the assurance of your salvation. You'll have no problem with the assurance that God will answer your prayers. You'll have, well, I don't have time. And verse 18, and my people shall, oh, I like it. And my people shall dwell in what? By peaceable habitation and sure dwellings. Oh, and listen to this. And in quiet resting places. Does that describe your home? Is your home a peaceful habit, habitation? Is it a quiet, peaceful, tranquil? Well, it can be if the Spirit is poured out upon it. Amen? And you're making the right judgment calls, which produces righteousness in your home, which also produces the peace of God in your home. Amen? Oh, Robert, close us in word for Father, again, thank you for allowing us to come to church today. <clears throat> yes, we thank you for your living for calling us, giving us this building, and we have to be here. Lord, well, we do want to take these things and for your grace in our lives. Uh, Lord, help us to yield. Help us to take it for us. Uh, our path that you dissolve from the medical department. Lord, help us. Help us. Allow uh, your path away to speak to us through the preaching and through the brethren. And uh, Lord, we want to just want to be found faithful. We want to be found pleasing before we come back. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Hey. Brother and sister, what are your names? Don't <laughs> come. What is it? We're glad to have y'all. Thanks so much for being here. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank all of y'all for being here for that matter. Pray for the class next week. Always pray. You too as well. I see you more than I love kids. I love your shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yours too. Oh, 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 she went down there on Wednesday morning. Yeah. Over here for row five. She, my sister passed away from lupus a while ago. Okay. So she had a daughter, and she yeah. kind of had a nervous breakdown and stuff. So Monica oh, lines up wow. a doctor's appointments, helps her with something a few times a year. Oh, that's good. So she'll be coming back after two months, November. But um, she's trying to 